walks up to me, takes all the chains off, and tells me to get in the car. And I'm thinking in my mind, they're 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 gonna they're setting me up to try to shoot me. How did you deal with these demons? Did you know how to deal with them? As, as a drug addict, I did leave my body, and I was aware of demon powers. I really didn't know what they were until after I was saved. Are Christians going to make it if they don't step up to the plate and start understanding demonic warfare? Well, if most Christians could see into the spirit world, they would probably have a heart attack and die. You go into prison, three counts of felony, your life's pretty much over, at least you're thinking, and then all of a sudden, you meet Jesus. <laughs> and you go from living like hell to battling hell. My guest is uh, Billy Dalton. You you were a drug dealer. Uh, you got caught, a lot of other things, three felonies. We won't go into that, but trust me, Billy told me what they were. and They were not, you know, this wasn't cotton candy stuff. This was serious stuff. So, Billy, what happened? Tell me about that. What, what happened? How did... God turned your mind into the mind of Christ. Yeah, I you know, lived a, a violent criminal life. I was a young man. I was only 21 uh, when all this happened and really started running the streets uh, when I was probably 13, 14 years old. By the time I was 14 years old, I was an alcoholic, uh, smoking pot, uh, probably 15 years old. I started on drugs. Um, uh, by the time I was 16, I was mainlining heroin and uh, doing a lot of different drugs, um, you know, running in street gangs uh, in a lot of different cities. Uh, and so lived a, a very violent criminal uh, gang life. And uh, so, you know, I was just, my mind was so burnt out on drugs and, and just, uh, you know, staying drunk all the time and just wasted. Um but anyway, yeah, I, I did uh, get arrested again. The last time was uh, my third uh, felony. And so I was facing life in prison, uh, ended up in jail in uh, uh, Bloomington, Indiana. And um, while I was in jail, you know, I, I was, of course, doing some soul searching. It was, a, it was an old jail. It was nasty. I was in a cell with another guy. I had to sleep on the floor. There were roaches. I mean, it was just terrible. Um, you know, I wanted to know God, but I thought that I had to change my life before I could know him. I, I had went to church maybe once or twice in my life, really. Um, and, uh, you know, the times that I did go to church, everybody told me that I had to change. I had to cut my hair. Of course, I had hair down to my waist. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, the hippie generation. Now you well, know how I am. In other words, you felt like you had to come clean before you could come to God. Yeah, yeah, that's what you thought. Because right? religion religion teaches us that, Billy, doesn't it? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, religion, not, not oh, religion. Yes, yes. So you read a book, and the name of that book was what? The Cross and the Switchblade by David Wilkerson. It was about Nikki Cruz. And, and, yeah. and that, that just kept me away from God was because cause I knew I couldn't clean up my life. I knew I couldn't change. I had tried, and there's just no way. And when I read about Nikki Cruz and I saw that he didn't change his life and God accepted him, you know, I, 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 I told God, I said, hey, I don't know you. I don't know how to talk to you. I don't know anything about prayer. But, yeah. you know, if you accepted Nikki Cruz, you know, and he didn't change his life, then, I, then you've got to take me too. I was in a maximum security jail cell. They didn't take me out at all. Um, you know, they slid my food under the bars and, and so forth. Um, and so uh, this thought came to me, asked to be baptized. And so, um, the jailer came by, I said, Hey, you know, I want to be baptized. And he goes, what for? I said, well, I really don't know. And I just left it there. I mean, I really didn't think anything would come of that. Well, Easter Sunday, 1980, the jailer walked into my jail cell with a suit in his hand. He said, Dalton, we're taking you out today to be baptized. And that was the first miracle that happened in my life. I mean, here I am, maximum security, facing life in prison, and this guard standing there telling me, we're going to take you out to be baptized. <laughs> and and, and you, you, you said you had a sheriff pull up in a car. Right. Well, he chained me up. 
you know, they, they handcuffed me, they shackled me, they took me, you know, they were taking me out of the jail, out of the right. front of the jail. And all of a sudden the sheriff car pulls up, a young sheriff jumps out and says, I'll take him, walks up to me, takes all the chains off and tells me to get in the car. And I'm thinking in my mind, they're, they're, they're going to, they're setting me up to try to shoot me. You know, they think I'm going to escape because I didn't trust anybody. So right. I jump in the car real quick. Anyway, we, we start driving, uh, the sheriff's driving and uh, taking me to this church to be baptized. And uh, the sheriff looks over at me. He goes, so you're going to get baptized, huh? And I said, yeah, yeah, I guess. And he said, well, you know, what for? And I said, well, I really don't know. He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, for me, I guess it's just a starting place for the first time in my life to be honest with God and maybe get honest. with my. I don't really know. I, I just it's a starting place. He looks over at me and he goes, well, do you know Jesus Christ? I said, no, isn't Jesus dead? He goes, well, he was <laughs> dead, but he's not anymore. God raised him from the dead. Wait, this wait. Okay, hold it. Hold it. You, okay, you, you read a book and you, you, uh, Sword in the Switchblade, Nikki Cruz. And, and right. uh, by the way, that was about a criminal that God showed grace on and mercy. All right. Yeah. Now, now you want to get baptized, but you're getting baptized thinking, well, I'm believing in Jesus, but he's dead, right? I mean, he, he existed. Right. <laughs> okay. And so, the sheriff told me on the way, you know, yeah. you know, that Jesus Christ had been raised from the dead. And I asked the sheriff, I said, well, do you see him? He goes, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. You got to believe on Jesus because of what the Bible says. I said, really? He goes, absolutely. He goes, God raised Jesus from the dead. He's alive. And those words, David, Jesus is alive. They were burning in my heart. I mean, it was just like, what? Really? He's alive? You know, he's not just some Jesus on a, in, in a book or, or a story that, that somebody told me, but what? He's alive? And so we go to the church and um, I, I get baptized, the preacher, you know, and I'm thinking I get dunked in this water. When I come up, I'm going to be different. Right. And so, so the preacher dunks me under the water. I come back up. I start checking myself out. I'm like, oh, man, I'm still the same. <laughs> I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm like, I'm still the same. Nothing's changed. God must not want me. That was my thought. He didn't want me. I'm too bad. I'm too dirty. And. You know, that's it. And so, right. man, I'm just, you know, I'm disappointed. I'm thinking and I put my clothes back on. And, and David, we're walking down the aisle of this church. My dad was there. My dad was an army sergeant. He didn't know God. The preacher was there. The sheriff was there. Of course, he put handcuffs back on me. We're walking down the aisle of this church. All of a sudden, in the middle of the church, uh, my dad just stops everything. He looks over at me. He says, son, listen, you've been in trouble your entire life. You're getting ready to go to prison for a long, long time. You've destroyed your life. You've destroyed our life, your mother and I. You're a hardcore drug addict. He goes, son, I just hope this Jesus thing is real. And <laughs> when my dad said that, I just looked at him. And I said, oh. dad, yeah. I said, dad, I want to tell you something. From this second forward, I will live for Jesus Christ all the days of my life. And David when I did that, a miracle happened. The Bible calls it the new birth, but a miracle happened in my life. I, I was no longer a drug addict. I was no longer an alcoholic. Uh, my, my life had just, just something dramatic happened. It's like this weight was lifted off of me. Everything was different. I could tell. And um, I was, Bible calls it being born again. And it's been 40 years now. I've never touched a drop, drop of alcohol. I've never smoked a joint or anything like that, any kind of drug. Wow. Well, wow. yeah. you know, Billy, we're, we're going to have to go uh, to a break. But before we do, I want to real quick bring in the element of uh, of the evil one of, of the, being in the penitentiary. All right. these guys. I mean, you talk about uh, a cesspool of demons in a penitentiary. Oh, yeah. Here you are, a newborn Christian getting thrown in. You're still in prison, even though you're, you've been re released spiritually chains are broken you're still right. physically in prison so you had all these demons you're dealing with tell me real quick before you take a break what was a how did you deal with these demons did you know how to deal with them what happened 
Well, you know, fortunately, or I don't know if you'd call it fortunate or not, but I knew a lot about the spirit world because as a drug addict, I did leave my body and I was aware of demon powers. I really didn't know what they were until after I was saved, but I was familiar with that realm, the spirit world. And, you know, and, and very few really Christians are. The Bible tells us we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, ruling spirits, demon powers. And it, it's a different realm. It's a different world. It's a spiritual world. I've said this a million times. If, a lot, if most Christians could see into the spirit world, they would probably have a heart attack and die. Yeah. Because demon powers are real. They're ugly. They're filthy. And, you know, the, it, it, but the thing, I think the Lord, you know, really helped me in the beginning of my walk. Because I learned my authority in Christ. And so when I was faced with demon powers, I knew that Jesus Christ had defeated them on the cross and through his death, burial, and resurrection. And I knew my authority. Wow. You said something really important there, Billy. Authority. You see, many Christians don't understand their authority. You right. can't use your power that God's given you unless you understand you have the authority to use the power. That's right. How Kind of like a policeman, he has the authority to make an arrest. He has the authority to uphold the law. Uh, but, but if he doesn't know he has that authority, there's no power in him. He can't do anything. Now, m I want to ask you a question before we go, because I think it's important. It, are Christians going to make it if they don't step up to the plate and start understanding demonic warfare and are they going to make it? I mean, are they going to have to hide behind someone who does? Because you and I both know right. that the pits of hell is going to come after the weak ones first. Uh, so my question is, for the Christians out there listening that don't really want to dabble in demonic, don't want to think about demons, Billy, are they going to have a tough time in these, last, in these days to come? Well, they probably already are having a tough time. But... Um... You, you know, and, and I think it's identity problem, David. They don't know who they are in Christ and the authority that they have in Christ and that we belong to a different kingdom. We're, we're in this world, but we're not of it. Yeah. And so, yes, if a believer doesn't know their authority in Jesus Christ, and the Bible tells us to resist the enemy and he'll flee. We have to resist him every yeah. day of our life. We have authority over him. We have victory. And see, a lot of Christians are trying to get the victory, but yeah. they don't realize that Jesus Christ has already gotten the victory for us. He's already given us authority. He's already yeah. given us power over the powers of darkness to cast out evil spirits in his name. Yeah. And yeah. we have to know that, though. Yeah, you know, when we come back, I want to ask you about that. You mentioned Christians already are experiencing uh, demonic uh, attacks but you see billy some of these christians i talk to i've even had one christian tell me david i'm just it's just such a miracle i don't have any problems at all i don't have no anxiety i mean it's like i just walk through life like it's you know like mary poppins and i'm going what are you on drugs anyway <laughs> we're going to talk about that kind of christian when i come back um when we come back um and by the way, guys out there on downloads, when you're watching this, when you're not live, you'll only see up to this point, okay? The, set, the next uh, portion to come, you will not see it until the next day. It's in two parts. Why? Because, well, I don't want to get into it, but YouTube is playing all kinds of games. It's, it's not good right now. But, so it's divided up in sec. But if you're live, we'll be right back. When we come back, I'm going to talk to my, my guest, Billy Dalton, and I'm going to ask him how in the world demons he could have demon bites on his body is how did that happen is it possible for demons to leave marks on our body to bite us like that when we come back i'm talking to billy dalton we're talking about demonic warfare i'll be right back Everybody is someone's last evangelist. You bring out what the other churches don't bring out. Ten million ritually abused people. Yes, you expose things that they don't talk about. I just want to say thank you to David for making these videos because he's made people aware of what's 
going on. It's not the lukewarm church that's going to awaken. They're going to think, oh, the New World Order is wonderful. This is what we've been praying for. A demon right. could take on the form of an alien. You know, okay. Satan can mas masquerade himself as an angel of light. Okay. They get into people and cause people to do blood sacrifices and do all these demonic things. You talk about what other pastors, so-called ministers, don't talk about. I'm just so grateful for the work that you have done. So thankful for everything that you're doing and fighting for us in Hollywood. Stop playing church. It's time to be the church. And that's what I love about it. This is your Bible. Yes, you're right. Tell me, what, how did this come about? What was the first sign of the Bible leaking oil? So we have to ask ourselves, what is the source of this particular miracle? I touched the oil, I hit the ground. You all shoot up back. Here's the oil. It's all a fake and a fraud. Not too long ago, I released a video called The Bible That Leaks Oil by the Gallons, Proof of End Times Miracles. To date, this video has had almost 2 million views. To some, it's proof that God is alive and doing miracles. To some, it's questionable. And to others, it's even blasphemy. But my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will guide us into a better understanding of miracles in this Bible that leaks oil. We've analyzed the oil in a lab, and this is what it is. 